talking about rights, we move to the next panel, which is about... Uh, don't steal my mic. <laughs> Uh, which is about uh, political rights. So how uh, the participation of citizens uh, in democracy uh, can and should be changed in different levels. It's going to be a dialogue mainly between Lorenzo Mineo, who is the um, coordinator of the political rights activities with humans, and Anna... Oh, shit. Um, uh, who works with the ECIT Foundation, uh, and I leave the floor to Lorenzo, who is going to manage this. Okay, thank you very much, Virginia. Um, I think that uh, uh, in this panel we will address mainly two issues uh, related to democracy and uh, political rights. On the one hand, we have the issue of... Uh, saving democracy mm, from his crisis, um, uh, saving democracies as it is now. So uh, the, the battle uh, for the um, uh, rule of law is crucial in this way. And I know that the uh, ACID Foundation is uh, uh, mainly focused on the right related to citizenship. So uh, on the one hand, I think that is crucial to preserve uh, citizens' rights uh, as uh, liberal democracy always meant it. Uh, on the other hand, we have also to go further and uh, to promote uh, new forms of uh, civic participation, a new form of democracies, and I will address more this second challenge. I think that um, uh, in order to, to give a uh, a better framework uh, of these two aspects is better to start uh, with the question of uh, uh, political rights and uh, and the rule of law and uh, uh, all the rights that are related to citizenships. So I will give you the floor to Anna uh, because her foundation is exactly addressing the issue of uh, uh, European citizenship and building a European citizenship. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, thank you, humans, for this opportunity. Um, so uh, I will take over the place um, of uh, Peter Markovic, the director of the ESIT Foundation, who could not be here today. Um, I'm Anna, and uh, I'm actually in ESIT since officially a few weeks. Um, and I will be the coordinator for uh, the campaign and uh, the task force, youth task force that we are building up um, for the ECI uh, campaign. But first, let me say a few words about the ECIT um, Foundation, which uh, in the world of European uh, think tanks tries to fill the gap, uh, being the only one that uh, concentrates only on uh, European citizenship, uh, trying to uh, sh uh, create a shared concept, not only in practice, but also um, with research. And um, uh, in fact, every year it organizes a, a summer university, which brings together scholars, um, um, students, but also activists uh, to investigate this concept and uh, um, its development in terms of which new rights could be added, such as environmental rights, social rights, but also, as we were talking yesterday, uh, intergenerational equity. Uh, and um, so, yes, um, because... Um, um, during the summer, the university exactly was when we came up uh, with this idea of uh, launching an ECI. Um, and now I will go and try to contextualize a bit the, uh, the problematic. Um, so uh, we, we know that uh, in the last 10 years, the number of citizens um, living in another member states in the EU has doubled. And we know that um, freedom of movement is seen as one of the most uh, outstanding achievements. Um, of the EU, but um, uh, we stop. Uh, we never stop and think uh, about uh, how this is accompanied by the actually very limited democratic participation. 
uh, in fact, of almost uh, 70 million EU citizens residing in another member states, only eight register in the country of residence um, and considerably less uh, go back to the country of origin in occasion of the U European election. And the number is about 18% when it comes to local elections. Um, so, but of course, I would take this number with um, like carefully because, of course, um, um, the number of member states provide data uh, is very low, so we cannot really make further conclusions. Um, but one thing is clear that the low uh, turnout is there, and there are a lot of um, a lot of um, factors for that, such as um, lack of information, complicated procedures to avoid the double voting. Uh, lack of automatic registration of EU citizens in their country of residence, being uh, um, Latvia and Lithuania the, the only country uh, doing this by default for the European election, and adding a few more uh, when talking about local elections. Um, and we know, um, according to the last report uh, of the Europe, uh, on European uh, citizenship, that actually uh, this number doubled in the countries that provide uh, automatic registration. Um, but in general, the people um, don't vote also because they are uh, pr deprived by the, um, by the right to access um, democratic choices and elections uh, that really count. And uh, in a way, they are still uh, um, made feel like uh, foreigners more than um, fully participant in the community. <laughs> And when it comes finally to national election back home, uh, we know that a lot of citizens um, are still disenfranchised, meaning that they cannot vote, um, and they cannot vote uh, if they have resided abroad for a number of years, which may vary from country to country. Um, they cannot vote back home. And uh, of course, we all have experienced the lack of organization for postal and um, vote and voting in consulates. Um, so, what, uh, what this initiative tries to address is how to ensure that uh, political, effective political rights can be compatible with uh, the freedom of movement. And uh, yeah, so here is the draft text. Um, we, we hopefully will, um, able, will be able to um, submit to the Commission in, uh, in January 2020 with a new regulation. And uh, the text is based on Article 25, which gives a mandate uh, to the European Commission to report every three years um, on the, the development of European citizenship and uh, make new proposals for adding new rights. And it also um, encourages the Council to, um, to strengthen the existing rights and add new rights to Article 20, which is the one who in which includes uh, the possibility to vote and stand as candidates in um, European and local elections. Um, but going back to um, to why we want um, we want such a residential citizenship, so to speak, um, it has to do, uh, of course, with um, the fact that uh, I mean, one could argue that uh, a lot of long-term residents are more affected by decision taken in the country in their host country rather than their and nationality countries, or other may argue the contrary and say, okay, we're still more bounded to, to our home country. So from the point of view of the population on the move, we think actually that uh, to give a choice is, um, is the right approach and uh, to give also more value to a European citizenship. And then of course, um, uh, to give actually the opportunity to the European Commission to, to address together with other ECIs, uh, this democratic deficit, um, and, uh, and to increase turnout, um, also by also given granted that it is uh, um, it has, it is due to report on the new um, um, the report is due uh, for the European citizenship uh, this year, and also um, because it is organized in this conference on the future of Europe, uh, we think it's the is the right moment to, to build momentum, let's say. And of course, uh, it, to encourage better integration of EU citizens, because of course, like um, other migrants as well, they contribute with their taxes um, and send the children the same school and, uh, and use the same facility as national. So it would be logical to give them full political rights uh, uh, when um, in order to, to to shape the policies and um, 
and thinking about um, the, the principle of no taxation without a presentation and uh, um, and also the EU ban on a known um, of um, not discrimination um, in grand, uh, like on the ground of uh, 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 nationality sorry and um, and yes of course we know that this is actually I mean the wider aim of uh, equalizing political rights for all legally uh, migrants community is uh, it exceeds the scope of this uh, of this CCI of the uh, um, Commission competencies um, but we want to think that this can be a step forwards and that can trigger dialogue also at national level in order to to avoid discrimination among uh, between EU citizen and um, and uh, other um, third country nationals. Um, so yes, and if we look um, at the different electoral levels, we can find, of course, a lot of obstacles, but also some opportunities and um, terms of precedence, so to speak. Uh, if we look at the referenda, so um, all the referenda in the last generation, most of them have been about European issues. And, and yet citizens of the EU could not be able to vote. We all know that um, if the three million people uh, living in the EU citizen living in the UK and uh, one, million uh, one million British citizens uh, living in Europe could have voted, probably we wouldn't be here um, Yeah, to see this awkward <laughs> show. So, um, and, uh, but there are exceptions also, for example, in the case of the um, a Scottish referendum for independence in 2014. Um, Scottish legislation with, uh, together with British um, determines that everybody who, who was able to vote in the local election, so also a EU citizen, could also vote in the referendum. Um, then when it comes to regional election, um, well, um, we know that the Labour Party, for example, uh, was uh, taking a sample from the UK, had backed a motion to, to allow uh, a EU citizen and all other um, migrants to vote in the national elections and referendum, which, big news, didn't happen. And, um, uh, but still, um, s still looking at uh, the UK, for example, um, Irish people and also uh, other citizens from the Commonwealth are entitled to vote and to stand as candidate. Um, and then if we look um, abroad um, over the beyond the Europe also and New Zealand, for example, um, residents, non-citizen are allowed to, to vote in general elections. Um, and then I come to the regional one, which um, yeah, it may be, it may seem like the most feasible um, one, because uh, in a way it's seen as a natural extension of um, of the rights to vote in legal and uh, local election, um, and also because uh, the regional dimension is becoming more and more important uh, in many member states. For example, since the the, the creation also of the committee of the region, uh, these are you know elected representative and are taking more power to to influence. Uh, uh, EU decision making. And of course here also we have uh, some precedents, uh, um, member states like Sweden but also um, other cities in Germany um, allowed their um, the EU citizens to vote and uh, the last example is here from the Brussels regions which has uh, passed a motion also to let all um, um, both EU citizen and non uh, um, and term member uh, third country nationals to to vote in regional elections um, and yes now very brief to to our uh, campaign so we what we have observed is that in the last uh, European election um, there was um, an amount um, let's say there was an increase of turnout in the mid in uh, an average about 8%, but particularly among young and first time voters. So uh, here the percentage is 14%. And uh, that's why uh, we, our strategy focus on uh, for and first and foremost on young people. And we are building a task force of young people coming from this experience, uh, such as this time and voting, but also the huge online community. 
groups as my country Europe for instance and uh, so of course our target are youth transnational organization which share our values such as democratic participation pro-european narrative um, but of course on the other end uh, national uh, partners are equally important if we want to reach the treasure in at least seven countries um, and uh, in this way it's this is where the challenge lies because uh, of course um, um, connection are to be made with like expats communities or um, yeah such as Italians abroad or with other more institutional actors um, university um, but also politician maybe to a lesser extent if um, coming from different parties um, and this is challenging of course because um, this is not the type of initiative that you just uh, um, sign and that's it I mean it's uh, it really is about how we we see the the role of migrants and EU citizens um, in society and um, and also whether we see a more federal or or intergovernmental Europe um, and so it, that is why also we need to to continue to research. We need a lot of fact finding and uh, discussion, and this will happen hand in hand uh, uh, with the campaign. Um, for example, also with the, um, a working group at the ULB here, uh, who will be um, do research parallel to the task force. Um, so yes, and, and then of course this transnational voting rights can be uh, can be the theme of discussion in in, in a lot of events, uh, Association Day, um, Europe Days, and um, so yes, we are open for um, <laughs> of course question discussion and uh, partnership with other campaigners, um, and I would like to add just a last. Um, and uh, also uh, related to the the ECIs presented yesterday, and uh, and I think it's one thing that we are all a bit lacking. Um, one uh, big supporter, digitally speaking, uh, which are um, speaking. Maybe it's nothing new, but from my millennial perspective, is um, quite important, and is the role of also influencers and. Uh, like I'm talking about YouTubers more specifically. I don't know if uh, some of you knows about the like this initiative, uh, Team Trees. Who was uh, uh, no? Okay. Um, yeah. So this was an initiative uh, still ongoing, launched by um, a YouTuber, an American YouTuber, who, with a huge base of mobilization, of course. But he launched it alone and then got support from other YouTubers. And they were able in less than two months to plant uh, 17 million trees um, and to uh, raise accordingly 17 million uh, dollars. So one dollar, one tree. And they will get for sure the, to the um, result to, to collect 20 million by the end of the year. And uh, of course, um, this news was really not uh, taken into account by uh, traditional medias because they are YouTubers, so they do their bullshit video, and, and they're young. So, and I think that is why um, something that maybe the older generation still don't uh, uh, don't grasp, like the potential which is uh, underneath. And uh, and I think these people, like they are young, and they know they have the, they can shape the minds of a lot of other young people that follow them. So they want to do something also in this way. And I think. Of course, then it would need like to lower down the the voting age for ECI to 16 years old. Because, but so thank you very much. Yeah. Do you have a comment? You told me. Do the question now or afterwards? Okay, hope I will remind it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's better to take a question after the um, 
all panels, so we will have a dialogue with uh, everyone interested. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Anna, also because uh, uh, I think your issue is very important um, because it is a, a real problem. A lot of citizens, uh, European citizens, not living in their country, they want to have a voice in politics and uh, they don't have full rights uh, as uh, citizens. So, as you said, uh, political rights for a citizens are, no, are not only rights related to electoral democracy, uh, but also referenda that you mentioned. So uh, maybe the link between your um, intervention and the one I will have is also that there are um, new forms of participatory democracy, uh, as the one you mentioned uh, for the ongoing petition uh, to have a, a citizen assembly, European citizen assembly, uh, to reform treaties um, launched by uh, Democracy International. So uh, there is a link nowadays between uh, the activism for um, democracy, for the citizens' rights, and the activism for new form of political participation. Um, Okay, uh, you can all see the, the slides um, um, I prepared, uh, some slides uh, that my friend Samuele Nannoni, who also is an activist in participatory democracy, um, prepared. Um, and so uh, I think that now I will be focused mainly on, um, um, on citizen assembly that are an, a new tool of uh, participatory democracy based on the um, on the s s um, randomly selected citizens that will be part of uh, uh, an, um, a representative body uh, that can take uh, important decisions. So it's a new form of democracy that can be called elect electoral democracy and uh, uh, it is an important complement to the uh, electoral democracies because uh, nowadays we have to be aware that um, the, the, the democracy as we always known it uh, as, uh, is today in a crisis uh, and so there are at least three reasons uh, to support new form of, uh, of democracy. One is to be aware uh, of the democratic crisis, be aware about the fact that this crisis is structural, the structural, structurality of this crisis, so it's not just uh, this historical moment and then it will pass, and be aware that uh, we need to move beyond the electoral representative system in order to save democracy, in the sense that if we don't offer other forms of participation to citizens, uh, the, f the current form of democracy uh, could not uh, um, could not still be alive. We can say um, so. To move from other slides, I just have to click. I suppose, <laughs> but it's not working. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, nowadays we are living a huge democratic mistakes. Uh, we talk about uh, populism uh, and we see that there are a lot of um, uh, politicians uh, saying that uh, they represent something different uh, uh, compared to traditional politicians uh, because uh, maybe they are uh, they, 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 they don't are corrupted um, they they just uh, uh, they just don't have links with lobbies, and uh, this this was, for instance, one of the main messages that Trump was promoting in his campaign. I am already rich, so I don't need uh, I won't be corrupted, and that's, this is something that seems to work for um, uh, a lot of citizens. They trust them uh, because they feel that there is a difference, but actually. They are just politicians as the others. There is not a real difference. Uh, so the paradox is that we think, a lot of citizens think that the, the, the cha they feel that the democracy needs to be changed and they think that they can change it just by changing the kind of people they vote. But 
this is not true. You need uh, a more radical change. You need to change also the system to implement um, uh, electoral democracy with other kind of uh, uh, democracy. Uh, so I think that um, around uh, 3,300 years ago, uh, democracy wasn't so different from the way we know nowadays. Um, there was already a form of elective democracy, um, even if the election was more related to an elite. But if we think about it, the word elite uh, is as the same root of election, no? because the election were uh, considered as the, the system by which uh, the elite could, could, uh, would preserve uh, the power. So uh, during uh, 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 centuries, we always had kind of elections to give power um, to to um, to an, an elite, uh, we can say. So uh, that was the way we we uh, we used to give power to to people for uh, th that's the the way um, on which democracy used to work for a long time. Uh, and it still hasn't really changed. While the society has uh, uh, mainly changed, and there are uh, a lot of uh, changes imposed by technology, by uh, information, the change of the information system, we can say that our democracies are still um, in, in a form that is very similar to the one that was um, 13, um, 30 centuries ago. Um, so, what are the main changes that are uh, uh, inherent uh, uh, to the, um, the society in these years? We can see that the trust in politicians and in political parties is decreasing. Um, is decreasing a lot. We see that from the fact that there are less and less people that are going to that are participating to um, vote around the world. And uh, all pools sh shows that uh, um, a lot of people don't trust in politicians and in political parties. Every time that we, uh, the majority of people go to vote, they, the trend is to vote uh, a different party from the one you voted the last time. Um, so we see that there is, uh, there is this decreasing in trust in politicians and in parties. Uh, on the other hand, there is a lot, there is an, uh, um, the, the, on the other hand, the interest in political and social issue, uh, issues are, uh, is increasing. It's increasing a lot because we can see that, uh, for instance, on social media, people are saying their opinion, their thoughts, also their frustrations, we can say, uh, on political issues. So uh, the information systems seems to be more adapt to a, single issue um, um, way of uh, conceiving politics. On the other hand, uh, the trust in those uh, in politicians is decreasing. So there is this big paradox. How we can fix it? On the one hand, of course, there is uh, the issue of education uh, reform. One of the main, uh, the one of the most important uh, Italian thinkers, maybe uh, the most studied after um, Machiavelli is uh, Antonio Gramsci. He said that should schools should allow every citizen to become a ruler, to to be uh, to be a politician somehow. Uh, and this is because yes, in theory, uh, the, the the huge mistake of democracy nowadays is that uh, uh, we still consider that there is a uh, a difference between a common citizen and a a politician, while uh, a citizen can be a politician and we should offer instrument to a citizens to be a politician, we can say. So uh, to do, in order to do this, we need to have uh, a real democratic reform that is not just an illusion. For instance, uh, in Italy now we are uh, discussing uh, uh, a reform of the constitution that will cut MEPs and they present it like something that will change uh, the whole uh, political scenario. Of course, uh, this, is, this is just an illusion. We need a radical change in 
the way we conceive uh, our democracy if we're gonna we, if we want to go further and so here's um, uh, an instrument a tool um, that uh, can help us to to uh, address this this challenge so it's the citizen assembly uh, the the interesting thing is that we, we spoke until now about this this crisis this democratic crisis uh, and we don't have to invent a solution because a potential solution uh, already exists and uh, uh, it was invented, uh, um, uh, of course, we, c we could say by the ancient Greeks, uh, because uh, aleatorial democracy and sortition was used by in Athens uh, uh, centuries ago. But uh, it is used in modern and uh, liberal democracies uh, something like 20 years ago. So uh, what are we talking about? They are um, collegial bodies formed by common citizens, drawn to hold the function of member for a short and non renewal per period. So we are saying that, uh, for instance, a given number of citizens, they are part of a chamber that will discuss political issue, but it, this is very important for a short non renewable period. So it's not like a political mandate. Uh, they just discuss the single issues that will be the topic of the citizen assembly. So they are chosen on the basis of random criteria that guarantee the effective representation of society, of the dynamics and differences present in it, supported by experts with the aim of deliberating on one or more issue of public and general interest. So uh, there are several countries who already um, are experimenting these uh, um, uh, experimenting citizen assemblies. For instance, in Canada, we had uh, citizen assemblies uh, on the electoral reform, which is uh, maybe the topic on which it's more easy to see that there is a, a, a kind of conflict of interest uh, of parties, because every party will try to say, okay, I will make this electoral reform in, uh, in order to uh, achieve more votes. And if you give the say to citizens, maybe they, they think more about the best uh, electoral law for themselves, not for, for political party. Um, in Belgium, now we are having uh, the first experiment of uh, a permanent citizen assemblies. So usually citizen assemblies are um, just uh, here for a given time. Uh, um, in, in this case, the Germanophone region of Belgium have uh, uh, a permanent assembly that is uh, um, discussing a lot of uh, issues uh, mainly related to education. Uh, we have France. Macron in the last months has uh, uh, announced uh, a citizen assembly on climate. So there will be first um, a public consultation, an online consultation with citizens on the most important issue related to climate change. And then one that the issue will be defined, uh, a random uh, selection of uh, citizens will, uh, will discuss them and take some decision that uh, it will also uh, uh, analyze. And then the last word will, will go to the government. Uh, and uh, and then we have, uh, uh, for instance, Switzerland, where mm, some uh, uh, political scientists are studying uh, a way to connect referenda and citizen assembly in a way to put uh, the to, to give the last word to citizens and to a referendum after the deliberation of the citizen assembly. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I think that, as I said, there are many, many other cases. Uh, the most important one is probably the, the Irish one, uh, in which there was a mixed composition of citizens and politicians. Uh, um, some years ago, uh, the, the Irish Citizen Assembly discussed first the issue uh, of uh, uh, marriage uh, for gay people. Um, and uh, also the issue um, 
of um, of abortion. abortion. Uh, in this second case, there wasn't politicians in in the assembly, but in the first one, it, it was very important to have also politician in the assembly, even to uh, influence the discussion, because it was uh, a very important. Uh, transition to a new decision-making process. So the fact that uh, uh, local governments decided and, and, and the parliament decided to be part of the discussion was very important to make it more acceptable uh, even for uh, the political class. So uh, as I said, there are other cases in which uh, uh, we are proposing citizen assemblies connected to a referendum. Um, and another proposal that is still not uh, existing, still not real, but that some uh, uh, thinkers are proposing, is more related to um, have a, a part of uh, run, no, have a, a second chamber composed by uh, by citizen randomly selected. So uh, that's really uh, this is really going farther, uh, but. It's a proposal, a proposal that exists, and maybe uh, in some decades it, it won't be so so strange to think about it. Uh, a few words on the way um, on the way um, politicians um, on, on the way the, the, the power should be uh, should be should work in these uh, in these assemblies. There is a kind of tripartition of uh, roles. Uh, we can say that uh, politicians are, should guide the process, they should propose, um, they should guide the process in the sense that they should um, have a said in the discussion, in the way they, the, 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 the issue uh, should be discussed, they should also give advices. It's important that politicians take the floor in a citizen assembly. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the role of expert is very important. Experts are always part of citizen assemblies and they inform citizens uh, about the several options before the decision uh, will be taken. So the last word uh, goes to citizen, then they will decide, but it's important to understand that it's a step-by-step -step decision. The main difference between uh, a, a decision that came from a, a parliament, so a, an elective body, and a decision that comes from a, a, an aleatorial selected body as the citizen assembly, well, the main difference is that in the citizen assembly the, the discussion is, uh, is more uh, focused on on the real issue, not on uh, what a party should say it's good or not. The, uh, but it is important that uh, it's a very slow decision, a very slow decision because the expert will explain all the possible option. Uh, then there is a, a conscious. Um, the citizens became conscious of the different uh, uh, options they have, and they discuss, they exchange opinion. It was the previous uh, uh, idea of, of the parliament when we, when we, uh, when we had parliament the f for the first time in history, the word was parlement. So the, 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 um, uh, the, is the institution in which we talk, we discuss, and at the end of, the, of this discussion, after exchanging point of view, we take a decision. So this is, uh, uh, this is the, the previous conception of democracy and what is still happening in citizens' assemblies. So uh, that was to give an overall fr framework of what a citizen assembly is. And now I will try to make a com connection uh, with this uh, uh, tool and what we said, what we said until now, so the need of reforming democracy and uh, uh, of having a respect of democracies uh, in the European space nowadays, I think that uh, that I think that uh, um, uh, political systems should uh, 
uh, on the one hand, take into account uh, the fact that the democracy needs to improve and to change uh, in, his, uh, in his form, uh, and so accept uh, some very crucial reforms uh, on uh, citizenship rights. Um, on the other end, this is uh, directly connected to uh, another uh, conception of citizenship that should allow citizens to take part, directly take part to, to decision making in, uh, in politics. Uh, so uh, in Italy, for instance, we are both fighting for uh, the implementation of democracy and on of, the rule of, on of the rule of law. We are, for instance, launching an initiative to allow citizens to access to their uh, rights related to direct democracy and to uh, the popular initiative. Because nowadays in Italy, uh, it's it's uh, kind of uh, it's like it, if it was forbidden to uh, promote direct democracy. Because if you're not a party uh, that have public officers that are the, the ones who allow to collect signatures, because without the presence of public officer, you can't collect signatures. Well, if you don't have that, you just can't promote popular initiatives. And so this is a, an important breach on citizens' rights. Uh, on the other, so we are promoting uh, some initiatives to fix that. Uh, for instance, we want to launch a website on which we will have, we will uh, collect signature on uh, on a popular initiative. So even if it's not the way uh, the Italian law say the, we can uh, collect signature, we will say okay. But this is the European way uh, um, in which uh, we collect signatures. The, the European Citizens Initiative. So. Uh, an official tool, an official uh, institutional instrument of direct democracy already existing in Europe. Uh, that's the way it works. And so we will, we want to do the same uh, with the popular initiative in Italy. And we will say, we will see uh, then um, if this uh, civic disobedience will uh, will work. Uh, on the other end, we, we will uh, we will collect signatures on a popular initiative that is based on this institution uh, of, uh, of a citizen assembly on climate change. So, uh, as you can see, there is a fil rouge, we can say, between uh, political rights and new form of political participation. That, and that's what we want to demonstrate with, uh, with our action. Thank you. I will give the floor to some participants if there are questions. I think that there was a couple of questions before. Uh, okay, it was my fault. I said him that to, to ask questions later and then <laughs> we are missing him. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel a lot guilty. He had his opportunity to ask questions and <laughs> 